from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The 50 million rand Kumba Iron Ore Virtual Reality Center for Mine Design has opened at the University of Pretoria. Elan Solomons attended the Southern African Institute of Mining and Metallurgy's recent virtual reality conference where delegates were given a tour of the new facility and filed this report. The Virtual Reality Center, which is a first for Africa, is set to revolutionize both surface and underground mine design Entire mines can now be designed in a virtual environment, thereby amplifying the consequences of bad design, enhancing safety and potentially boosting mining efficiencies. The centre includes a state-of-the-art 75-seat lecture hall, a 3D cinematic theatre with a curved screen and cylinder-based room with a 4.5 metre high 3D screen providing a 360-degree view, a surround sound system and five overhead projectors, all of which enable students to take a virtual journey into the heart of mining operations. University of Pretoria's Mining Engineering Department Head, Professor Ronnie Weber Youngman, explains more. The cinema was, in, was, was developed specifically with a need to be able to introduce our students to the real environment with regards mining. And the nice thing about that cinema is that it's got this 3D stereoscopic view that you could actually see the depth of, you can, you can feel the depth of mining. And also at the end of the day, what we tried to achieve was to get our students to sit in that cinema. We can stop that video at any time. We can manipulate the pictures and we can actually get the students to see much better in a, in a, in a, in a 3D environment what mining is all about. Because one of the things that we found with our students, they battled to see the mining context in 3D from a book perspective. So the minute you look at it in a book, you, you don't get the same feel. But when you see it in 3D, immediately you have that response from the students. Okay, now the penny has dropped. And I think that's the secret of that. The, the cylinder specifically is aimed at an immersive technology. So you're really in the mine. Um, uh, the second phase of this whole process is to be able to put in tracking devices so that you will be in a position to, to, to check the movement of the people within that cylinder. The nice thing about the, the cylinder is you can get closer and also almost get onto a truck in that immersive environment and you really get the reality feel of mining in that immersive environment. But I have to say something, I've always said to people this immersive technology, even the theatre will never replace real time mining. And we need to be cautious that students don't see this as, a, as something that is, that is mining, but because it relates to mining, but you still got to go experience what mining is about. Other news making headlines this week, filtration and separation solutions provider Roytec completes testing at Bindura Nickel Corporation. ESCOM unveils a new coal sourcing strategy as it pursues its 2 billion rand optimum claim. And Zestweg is still acquisitive after adding scale and scope to its transformer offering. Filtration and separation solutions provider Roytec completed testing and adapting a larger filter press system for mining company Bindura Nickel Corporation's Trojan Nickel Mine in Zimbabwe. Roytec Business Development Director Peter Sampson discusses the significance of this project for the company. So um, this is part of our new business model where we're uh, bringing in major components from our Chinese partners. Um, we support the technology locally we do the sizing and process guarantees on the machine and uh, once the machine arrives in South Africa we fit the appropriate components for serviceability. Instrumentation, hydraulics, gearboxes, electric motors are all, uh, are all done locally. Um, this machine is uh, destined for Trojan nickel in Zimbabwe where it will dry uh, nickel concentrate on the mine and it's just been going through a number of weeks of shop testing to make sure that it's um, it's ready for operation. Samson also highlights the importance Roytec places on research and development, noting that over the past four years, the company's research unit has developed several industry-leading technologies, such as its Radflow Feedwell system. State-owned electricity utility ESCOM has confirmed an overhaul to its coal sourcing model, which could result in it withdrawing from its historical cost-plus arrangements with tied collieries in favour of arm's-length commercial contracts with coal suppliers. The source of the dispute is that the contract with Optimum still has two years to go. They are under contractual obligation to supply us with coal until 2018 at a particular price 
and they are asking to be relieved of their obligation. And we are not in a position to relieve anybody of any obligation at the moment. You all have seen what happened to us at NERSA. The tariff increases that we requested for were not given. The tariffs that we're getting are not cost reflective. Uh, how do we then engage ourselves in the business of rescuing mines? Because uh, uh, Optimum is saying, look, we need to renegotiate this. And we need to waive. They have got accrued penalties of two billion that they owe us, for which we have issued summons, because the two billion must be paid. South African electrical equipment supplier and manufacturer Zestweg remains on the prowl for synergistic acquisitions, having recently completed a transaction to buy TSS transformers, a deal that materially increases its local manufacturing capabilities and heralds its entry into the maintenance and repair sector of the market. Um, the TSS acquisition was far more strategic in terms of our thinking than the previous one that we did when we bought uh, today what's called uh, WTA or Vec Transformers Africa, which was previously Hawker Siddeley. In the sense really is um, we previously were very active in the market of Transformers 20 MVA and larger. And that's really the, the scope where you can start competing when you are importing. When you want to compete in the smaller sizes, to have the import duties as well as um, shipping and so forth, it really starts becoming a problem for us. And uh, the Hawker City transaction was really to stimulate that. But we also soon realized that we needed to expand Hawker City, or the now today WTA Transformers, um, to become a bit more competitive in a bigger scope of uh, supply. And it pushed the benchmark for us to really start act, uh, acting on, on a 40 MVA requirement, up to 40 MVA requirement. And the current facilities that we have at uh, Big Transformers Africa just was not sufficient. And uh, strategically we decided that it's time for us to embark on a, a bit of a different um, um, avenue which we're not really used to before. And that's embarking on to a repair kind of uh, strategy. And uh, once again we decided that uh, very strategically because of the number of transformers that we have in the country. Um, over the last, uh, s between seven and ten years, we supplied a huge number of transformers, prim primarily to, to Eskom. And uh, we felt the need that we needed to start gearing ourselves to be able to be more than just a transformer supplier, but also to, to be able to provide services. And, of course, if repairs are needed. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.